this is let's say 29 so in the previous lecture we were trying to see how to make a, a voltage controlled voltage source with a gain of more than one with certain characteristics like uh, for example it should be the gain should be invariant of invariant to changes in process voltage and temperature also naturally if it's a voltage control voltage source we would want the uh, we would want the gain to be kind of independent of of uh, of the load resistance that it is driving and with uh, based on the arguments we came up with this following architecture and this is based on negative feedback right okay then uh, we said that i mean what type of amplifier do we know which gives us large gain because ultimately we saw that in order to make this negative feedback loop work properly the gain the gain stage had to be of infinite value right in, ideally infinite but in principle it has to be quite large and what is the only uh, gain stage that we know of till now it's a common source amplifier right so so what i would like to do is we then say that let's put in the common source amplifier and then see what happens correct so let's put in the common source amplifier uh, what is the common source amplifier the incremental model of a common source amplifier is the following that we have been doing for a long time So this is VE, this is GM times VE because remember in a common source amplifier the source is rounded so it's not GM VGS it's GM VE right and this kind of goes here right so this becomes a this becomes a V naught okay okay fine but then do you see a problem and we saw that there is a problem if we connect it like this the problem is that of sense of feedback so how do i figure out the sense of feedback anywhere in the loop i give a hypothetical excitation and see if the action of the loop is to is to is to increase the excitation or reduce the excitation right so we can do that so let's let me choose the excitation point here if this goes up what happens this goes down this goes down there is another inversion that is taking place because of this negative sign so this goes up so clearly this is a positive feedback which means this is not going to this is not going to work however we also we also saw that if the sense of the loop is negative or if the sense of the loop goes towards positive feedback we can change some polarity somewhere right so in this case we have this ideal summer where we have a plus and minus we have marked so we can simply argue that if this had be a common source amplifier all we need to do is to change the signs of this summation block right if we change the sign of the summation block what happens to the loop note that vi is relevant vi i can as well ground while trying to find out the sense of the loop right so so let's see so if again if this goes up this goes down this goes down now it goes through a positive sign so this goes down correct so in essence the excitation any excitation in the loop that i am trying to insert the loop is trying to negate it right the loop loop is trying to suppress the excitation uh, which means that this loop is in negative feedback okay okay fine so far so good so now we want to make this thing with transistors so what should we do hmm so what is ve so if i if i call this this voltage vf right what is ve ve becomes vf minus vi okay so if ve is vf minus vi what is this current what is gm ve gm ve becomes gm vf minus vi 
So, so in essence, the current through this incremental, uh, so what I am essentially saying that this is V, so this is rounded. So, the current that is flowing out is Gm times Vf minus Gm Ve, which is G, Gm times Vf minus Vi, because this is Gm Ve, because Ve is equal to Vf minus Vi, correct? Now, if we pause here for a second and think, given that we have a single transistor, right? So, this is the incremental picture of a transistor. Given that we have a single transistor, can we manipulate the transistor or can we manipulate the terminals of the transistor in such a way that we get Gm times Vf minus Vi directly and get rid of that, get rid of this summer at the, at the input. And as you would, as you must have noticed by now that what is a transistor current? A transistor current in principle, in principle a transistor current is Gm Vg minus Vs, correct? So, in principle, this is what our transistor current is. Now, as it turns out in common source amplifier, we have grounded the source. So, the current becomes Gm Vg. In this case, uh, in this case, in this case, we have also grounded the source and applied the difference voltage at the gate. But we could have as well, if we could apply, if we, we could as well apply Vf at the gate, right? We could have as well applied, so like uh, instead of rewriting, overwriting over it, so this is Vf minus Vi, right? The ground. So we could have as well said that we will do this. We could have as well said we will do this, we will put Vf here at the gate and we will put Vi at the source. If that is the case, what would have been the current? This would have been Gm Vf minus, minus Vi, correct? So why are we doing this? We are doing this because if we can get this difference of difference current from the transistor itself, then we can get rid of this. Then we can get rid of this. Correct? So, what I am essentially saying is this. So, let us go back and re-sketch our plot. So, if we can replace this guy in such a way that this is Vf and this is Vi, then then we are all good, right, in the sense that this can be connected here because this becomes Vf, this is K minus 1 R, this is R and this current will be, so this is Gm times Vf minus Vi and this becomes the V0, right. Note that the picture on the left and the picture on the right are essentially identical as far as the transfer function between V0 and Vi is, is concerned. Right? Okay. So, if, if I, if I, uh, I mean this, the, the drawing here look, looks a bit messy. So, let me, let me redraw it. So, Uh, instead of 
instead of putting the gate on the left hand side what i'll do i'll put the gate on the right hand side so that i don't have to i don't have to get this long line from uh, one side of one side of the register stack to the other so let me redraw this so So this has to be gm pf minus vi right so let me sketch the gate here so this becomes vf this k minus one r this is r and this becomes vi right so and this becomes my transistor this is the transistor where this is the drain this is the gate this is the gate and this is the source okay make sense note that we haven't done any magic here we just have simply argued in plain english and and arrange the uh, arrange the incremental model in order to realize a negative feedback loop this negative feedback loop is exactly the same negative feedback loop that we started off with in terms of i mean as far as the relationship between v naught and vi is concerned okay okay but do you see an issue some of you might have already seen the issue and the issue is this vi that we have will not be an ideal voltage source right so vi Whenever we say VI, we assume that it's a some VI with some intrinsic resistance RS. I mean, that's what we have been assuming all along. So there's no point for us to uh, re, uh, to to remove that assumption, right? So so we will have we'll have this. Now, what's the problem? If we have this, if we have this, then naturally this voltage here is not equal to VI, right? Why? Because the looking in impedance of this structure is what looking in. We have done this before. The looking in impedance and the source of a in source of a uh, MOSFET. This is the MOSFET. Uh, if if you look into the source, if we neglect channel and modulation. The looking in impedance is 1 over gm right looking in impedance is 1 over gm which means that there will be a, you will be drawing some current through vi which means that the source voltage will not be will not be vi okay so that's a problem so what should we do so among all the circuits that we have learned what do you think we should do in order to rectify this problem what is the problem? The problem is connecting input directly to the source of a transistor. loads the loads the input correct so what should we do we should prevent loading we should prevent current getting sucked out of of the source whereas we still want to have to get vi at the source right so what is the solution what is the solution the solution is apply user use a voltage buffer to feed or rather to isolate vs isolate the source from the input so what type of what type of voltage buffer that we are aware of the only voltage buffer we are aware of till now is a common drain amplifier right 
or a source follower architecture right so let's do that so if we do that what will what will we get so this is vf so what do we what what do we want now we want a source follower architecture or a common drain amplifier and we have done common drain amplifier before so we'll just pull out that architecture and this is what the common drain amplifier look like right and now that we have seems like we have two mosfets let's mark one as gm2 and this as gm1 and what is the uh, what should we do we should connect this common drain amp because we are buffering vi we are trying to buffer vi into the source of of gm2 so what we would like to do is to simply simply connect correct and let's call this common node vx right which is a source of both this both this yeah both these transistors again i am calling transistors but these are in a sense are incremental model of, of a transistor okay okay hmm. so if we do this what's essentially is happening so this voltage is vi we are not drawing any current from vi right so then we need to find out what is this what is the current that is actually now flowing right so what is this uh, what is the current through the left contraption the current to the left contraption is gm1 times vi minus vx correct what is the current uh, through the uh, through the right contraption the current through the right contraption looking down so this this is this current is going downwards right this current is going downwards uh, similarly this current going downwards is gm2 vf minus vx right okay so what is the so if i uh, if i solve for kcl at vx what should i get solving for kcl at vx i should get gm1 vi minus vx plus gm2 vi minus vx sorry gm2 vf minus vx is equal to 0 right so what is vx vx becomes so gm1 vi plus gm2 vf becomes gm1 plus gm2 times vx so what is vx Vx becomes gm1 vi plus gm2 vf by gm1 plus gm2 right okay if this is the case then then uh, uh, then what is the what is the incremental current what is the incremental current that is flowing which is essentially gm1 times vi minus vx or i can as well say minus gm2 times vf minus vx so let's pick any because both will be same so the incremental current let's say this current let's say i, I said this is the direction of the current i this current is gm1 vi minus vx so i becomes gm1 vi minus vx which is equal to gm1 uh, gm1 vi so let's do this this becomes vi minus gm1 vi plus gm2 vf by gm1 plus gm2 so we get 
gm1 plus gm2 in the denominator there is a gm1 here uh, so in the top we get gm2 vi minus vf right by gm over gm1 over gm2 correct which in essence means that the current i becomes gm1 gm2 by gm1 plus gm2 times vi minus vf correct okay so this is this is a crucial outcome and let's ponder over this for for a moment right so what is this telling us this is essentially telling us that this, this contraption that we have that we have just designed this is vf this is vi right and this is grounded and something is connected at the load side of uh, of the second transistor and this is gm1 this is gm2 so the short circuit current or the current that is that i am drawing from this is equivalent to the difference between the two voltages vi and vf multiplied by some factor which is some equivalent transconductance so this is equivalent to this guy is equivalent to maybe i should go to the next page so this is vf this is gm1 gm2 so let's say i am interested in in the current that i am drawing out this guy is equivalent to a case where i have a single transistor circuit where the, at the gate i applied vi sorry uh, yeah at the gate i applied a vi and at the source i applied a vf and the current that i am getting is equal to some gm times vi minus vf as far as if i say that this is equal to i right then the equivalence of the output current the only not that i am only trying to draw an equivalence of the output current nothing else the equivalence of if, if these two these two networks are identical as long as gm becomes equal to gm1 gm2 by gm1 plus gm2 right if this becomes if we satisfy this relation, relationship then it seems like if these are true then figure a and let me call it figure b the figure a and b are identical from the perspective of output current right however they are not identical but they differ by but they differ in terms of loading the input in the circuit in the right right in figure b in figure b whatever is connected here will get will get loaded i mean i may as well not say vi and vf i may as i may instead of vi and vf i can say this is v1 and v2 right so this is as this is v1 this is v2 so this will become v1 gm v1 minus v2 right so the again the network in the left and the network in the right are identical from the standpoint of 
the incremental current that it, they are producing. So essentially, if we are interested in only evaluating incremental current, we can as well say that the network on the left is a is almost like a common source amplifier whose whose transconductance is gm1 times gm2 by gm1 plus gm2 right however from the standpoint of loading the input clearly the network on the left does not load because you are not drawing any current through the through either of the inputs v1 and v2 however in the network on the right you are drawing current through one of the inputs in the network on the right you are drawing current through v2 so if we use if we use the common source amplifier in our case right if we had used common source amplifier in our case in order to get that difference right we are trying to amplify the difference note that we are trying to amplify the difference of ve right we are trying to amplify the difference and in a common source amplifier the difference can be got by applying one of the inputs to the gate other inputs to the source however the input to the the input that you are applying to the gate is not getting loaded but the input that you are applying to the source is getting loaded so what is the solution the solution that we came up with was to instead of directly applying let's buffer it if we buffer it we get an we get an interesting contraption and this contraption uses uses two transistors right looks like one is a common source other is a common gate right or in other words one is a common source other is a voltage buffer but when you put the two contraptions together it is impossible to say which one is the common source and which one is the common gate it essentially they are identical and on top of that if we say that gm1 is equal to gm2 right if we make gm1 to be equal to gm2 then there is absolutely no way you can figure out which one is driving what okay so essentially both sides are driving driving each other and this contraption is often called a differential amplifier right so this contraption is often called uh, not uh, i mean i haven't really shown the output output side but this essentially is a is a, is a first step towards making a differential amplifier because we are amplifying the difference of two voltages how are you planning to amplify we are planning to amplify by putting some resistance here right if we put some resistance here then the voltage that you will accrue here will be will be what gm times v1 minus v2 times r right so the voltage across that r will be voltage across that r will be an amplified version of the differences of v1 and v2 right the same would have been true for a common source amplifier one might argue that common source amplifier is also a differential amplifier because it amplifies the it senses the difference between the gate and the source voltages and produces a current proportional to the difference of the gate of the source difference between the gate and the source right so however the key difference is what is the key difference the key difference is the source terminal will load one of the inputs okay okay fine so so now that we we have a new configuration it's time to it's time to look into what this new configuration entails and that's what we like we are going going to look into in this class and and few more classes right so note that uh, what is the genesis the, again the genesis is we would like to put everything in negative feedback right so we'd like to put this guy in negative feedback right so before we put this negative feedback network back what we would like to understand is how does this part of the circuit works in isolation we'll assume that i have an input of vy in one terminal and i have an input of vf in the other terminal and we would like to establish the, uh, we'd like to understand the nuances of this configuration before we proceed and put the feedback back right we'll eventually put everything together but since we this seems to be a new new beast right so let's invest some time and figure out what uh, what this will what new things that uh, that that this contraption brings to the table okay mm -hmm.